Using Adobe Illustrator, let's create two text-based logos using the initials TW. Open a new file and under the preset details, let's input five by five inches and then click the up arrow next to change artboards to two. Then I'll go to more settings. This is where we can specify the layout of our artboards. I will take the space down to half an inch and select the arrange by column option. Then click create document. As you can see, my artboards are displayed vertically and the space between the artboards is half an inch. Let's select the type tool, then click and drag a text box. It will pre-fill with placeholder text. While the text is still selected, I will type a T to replace it. My T is super small, so I will switch over to the select tool and then open up the character panel. If your panel isn't visible, you can go get it under the window dropdown. That is located within the type category. I am going to change my font to Arial and then click on the up arrow next to font size. I'll take the size way up. In fact, it'll be faster for me to directly type in the font size. Now, to save a little time, I will copy and paste that text box. I can double click to enter the text box and then double click again to select the text itself. I will change it to W. I'll take the size up a bit more. Now I'll select the rotate tool and turn the W. Because I want to stack the T on top of it, I now realize I need to take the size back down a bit. You can drag in the handles of these text boxes if you want. Notice that doing this though does not change the size of the text. The text and text bounding box are two separate entities. My T is now obstructed by my W, so in order to select it, I need to use the Arrange feature. I'll right click over the selected box to see options and then go to Arrange and Send to Back. Now I can easily select my T box. I'll adjust the bounding box and then rotate the T and position it as so. When you want to move something just a little, I like to use the keyboard arrow keys. Now let's move to the second artboard. Using the type tool, I will draw another text box. Let's choose a different font. When I click on the arrow next to the funnel, I am presented with classification options. I'll select the first one, sans serif. The fonts I am scrolling through now will only be sans serif. I'll choose glacial indifference and change the font style to regular. Now I'll increase the size. Why did my T just disappear? Because it outgrew my bounding box. That is what this little red square with a plus sign is indicating. All we need to do is make the box bigger. Now there's my T. I'll repeat the step of copy and paste to get my W. I need to use the select tool to move it in place. I'll choose the impact font for the W. I'll repeat the steps of arrange and send to back so that I can select my T. I want to change the color of my T to white, so I will go get that from the swatches panel. Then I'll move the T down a bit. Now to a really cool feature. We can change the shape of our letters in Illustrator. I want to elongate parts of the T to achieve a more prominent figure ground effect. I do this by going to the type dropdown and create outlines. It is important to switch over to the direct selection tool to see and modify the outlines and anchor points. Okay, so what are we looking at? I have turned my text into a shape. It is no longer editable. These anchor points allow me to modify the shape. When the anchor points are filled in with blue, that means they are selected. If I click this anchor point, the rest deselect. Holding down the shift key allows you to select multiple anchor points. I'll select these two and drag them to the right. When dragging, you can hold down the shift key to keep it perfectly straight. I'll do the left side now. Note that if I select only one anchor point, it modifies in this way. I'll undo that and select both points, repeating the effect. Let's elongate the top part as well. Now we are ready to save and export using the file dropdown. I'll save to the Creative Cloud. Then I'll export showing you two different methods. For the first one, I will not check the box next to Use Artboards. Then I will repeat the process, this time checking Use Artboards. Let's take a look at how they exported differently. When I did not select Use Artboards, both designs appear in the same PNG image. 
When I do select Use Artboards, each design saves as a separate PNG image. 